All right, what is going on YouTube? Foxy, you're back up in the today with a brand new video. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the things I disliked, things I liked, and certain things that I didn't dislike, but I didn't really like them either, for Call of Duty Modern Warfare. As you guys know, I got flown out to LA to play the new game, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the build that we played specifically, and this is just from my experience from the build that we played. There's a possibility for things to change, and I hope that some things do change, but I want to make that clear that this is just my opinion based on the build, and I appreciate that Activision and Infinity Ward flew me out to play the game early. This was my first time ever doing that for any Call of Duty game, so I was extremely hype, but that doesn't really change anything as far as how I feel about certain games. You guys know me, I'm pretty honest, and I kind of give criticism where it needs to be given. So if you guys do enjoy, or if you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Make sure you guys leave a like down below, subscribe, turn on notifications. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. But I want to give a big shout out to my brand new partner in Respawn Products. They provided me this awesome gaming chair, which is super comfortable. It's probably one of the most comfortable gaming chairs I've ever sat in. And I know everyone, whenever they get a new something new or their partner was on they're like oh my god it's the greatest thing ever but out of the three gaming chairs that i've had the most comfortable ones for me have been this one and that red one and or whatever you guys couldn't really see it but there's a red one behind me there you go there that one there's that one so that's like the second most comfortable one this one's super comfortable and if you use code foxy for respawn products you guys get five percent off your order and that helps me out greatly as a content creator but enough of the enough of the pitch for respawn Let's talk about Call of Bodhi Modern Warfare. Let's go, bros. All right, so I'm gonna start this video out by talking about the things I did not like. My first thing that I did not like, I did not like the 20v20 mode. I'm gonna be real with you guys. Honestly, I said this to multiple people. I said, if I wanted to go play Battlefield, I'd go play Battlefield. The criticism for this is that it just felt a lot like Battlefield because of how big the map was and then how much I was running around trying to find people. There was a lot of people who were at this event who were camping in this mode and that just kind of baffles me a little bit because why would you fly out to LA to sit in a corner? Like, I, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> so one of the reasons why I think it felt like Battlefield was because it had no mini map. In this mode, there's no mini map, and we'll talk about the mini map later on as well as something that I'm kind of in between on. But because there's no mini map, I always found myself getting lost because the map is so big. And I think that the map that we played is a little bit too big for 20v20. I felt like the map might have been for like 30v30, maybe 40v40, somewhere around there. But I felt like 20v20 was a bit too small for this size of a map. And apparently they're gonna go bigger, so. Uh, and I'm not saying that the mode is bad. I'm just saying that I personally don't like the mode because I like 6v6, I like the 2v2, and I even like the 10v10 to be honest, because the 10v10 felt similar to Ground War from the older games, so. I just found myself running around the map more than shooting people and trying to kill people. I will say this though, for the 20v20, we played 20v20 TDM and we played 20v20 Domination. And I found that the 20v20 TDM was a little bit more fun than the 20v20 Dom because in Dom, there's like five or six flags and there's people camping the flags, obviously, because you know, you're trying to hold an objective or whatever. And I understand that, but it just was super campy at times. And I was just like, oh my God, it's, a really good idea and I think it could bring a new audience in but for me personally it's just not what I like also with the 20v20 mode there's an ATV and there I think there's a tank you can drive around I never got in the tank but I tried to drive the ATV thinking it was like a mongoose from Halo or it was the ATVs from Blackout and those two are pretty smooth the Blackout ATV drives very similar to the mongoose from Halo, but the controls were super clunky. And I think that they're gonna work on fixing this. I'm hoping they do because I'm pretty sure a lot of the creators that went out and played, they all said the ATV was almost undrivable. Like I got on it and I tried to drive a couple of feet or drive forward a little bit. And I was like, oh dude, this is like terrible controls. I can't like move left or right or anything like that. It was obviously it wasn't polished. So uh, next there's no point streaks. Uh, that's not a big deal because I love kill streaks. I love the kill streaks are back. But if someone wants to play the objective, I think point streaks from Modern Warfare 3 should come back in this game. That's just something that I think caters to people who play the objective as well. Next, there's no dead silence in this build, or there wasn't. I'm going to assume, and I probably shouldn't assume, but I'm going to assume that they're probably going to add dead silence in the future as a perk. It just doesn't make sense to me 
if they're gonna do search and destroy or the cyber attack mode that there wouldn't be any dead silence in this game especially with how the doors work because if you guys don't know, which you probably do because you've watched all the videos and things like that, you guys know that you can open doors. And there's multiple ways you can open those doors, but there's some ways that are louder than others. So like if I run straight through the door, that's the loudest way to open the door. But if I just like kind of open the door like by pressing square, it doesn't open it as loud as me bum rushing through the door. You know, and I feel like dead silence should probably be in the game if, you know, we're trying to open a door slowly or quietly and we're trying to flank or something like that. I just feel like dead silence should be in the game. Next is the respawn delay. So in pretty much every game mode, there's a respawn delay except cyber attack because it's like search. If you die, then you wait to respawn or someone can revive you in cyber attack, which I think is really cool. I really like that mode, honestly. That was probably my favorite mode uh, out of all the modes that we played so the respawn delay i think it's like two seconds or two or three seconds in tdm but there shouldn't be a respawn delay in tdm or domination that's never been a part of a call of duty game as far as respawn delay at least for those modes there's certain modes that do have respawn delay like headquarters used to have respawn delay because if you died and someone had captured the headquarters like you would have to wait till the headquarters was destroyed or time was up and then you respawned that's one thing hard point is the same way there's a respawn delay for that specific mode it's a competitive mode there should be respawn delay um capture the flag is also that way however the modes we played team deathmatch and domination should not have respawn delay uh, there's just certain modes that shouldn't have it and there's certain modes that should have it that's all I gotta really say about that. Now, I really liked all the streaks in the game, and we'll talk about that later, but there's certain streaks that took too long to call in. Like, I got a precision airstrike once, and it's not like a mini-map pops up like Modern Warfare 2. Basically, it's not a pair of goggles, but like, it's just, it's kind of like binoculars, and you put them on, and then you call in the airstrike wherever you put it at. That's cool. I like that it's realistic, but at the same time, you're at more of a risk to die when you're calling in that streak and that's a problem because then a lot of people won't use that streak and in my opinion if you're gonna have a lot of streaks in a call of duty game you want people to use almost every single one you know in modern warfare 2 there's certain streaks that you use to get a nuke yeah but there's also certain streaks that you could use and it would be no problem like i was playing mw2 a couple weeks ago and there was someone using a precision airstrike i was like why aren't they using a harrier but at the same time you can still use certain streaks in that game and you'll be fine pretty much but as a person who likes to immerse themselves in the game and immerse themselves in every aspect of the game i love that there's a lot of customization in this game so far from the build that we played but i want to make sure that people use all the streaks at least once you know and that they just don't look at it and go oh i don't want to use that it's useless you know i don't want there to be useless streaks i want there to be streaks that everyone says oh yeah we should, should we use this or this very similar to how create a class goes the last thing it's super minor for me it just brings in more immersion and it really gets me into the game uh the announcers and i'm gonna compare it to modern warfare 2 because i think modern warfare 2 has the best announcers for games whether you're the spetsnaz or the tf141 or the rangers it doesn't matter which faction you are when you hear that an ac-130 is coming into the map whether it's on your team or the enemy's team you know it because you hear this enemy ac-130 above enemy ac-130 above Enemy AC-130 above! Enemy AC-130 above! Enemy AC-130 above! Personally, I'd really like it if the announcers in this game had a tone that was similar to Modern Warfare 2. A badass, intense military feeling to it. That's how I look at Modern Warfare 2's announcers. And in this game, it's not really like that. It hasn't really been like that for a while in Call of Duty. And I didn't expect it to be like that, but I was hoping it would. So those are my dislikes. And I'm sure there's a lot of you that are like, wait, he likes that there's no minimap? Oh, I'm done with this video. And no, that's not what I'm saying. So I only have a couple things on this list, but the first thing I liked, but disliked also was 10v10 i think 10v10 is cool it's very similar to ground war the map that we played on for 10v10 was pretty good but we played headquarters personally for this event we only got so much time to play the game and like i said earlier the respawn delay in headquarters is a long time sometimes so if you respawned and then you died immediately and then uh, the enemy team captured the headquarters or we captured the headquarters 
then you don't respawn again for like another like 40 50 seconds or whatever and then you're just sitting there waiting i think we should have played domination because it would have given us more playing time and that's my only beef with playing headquarters i like headquarters as a game mode i was really happy to see it back as soon as i saw headquarters i was like dude like they're bringing back headquarters holy shit this is awesome but i think that they should have saved that for launch because that would have been a really awesome surprise and we could have just played 10v10 domination on this map other than that the 10v10 was really cool i enjoyed it actually the realism mode was really hard to adjust to i think it's a great concept i love that it's a new game mode that can cater to a certain audience you guys know how i like diversity and i like options to choose from having game modes to choose from gives the game more life that's why games like black ops 1 and modern warfare 2 are so beloved by the community because they have tons of variety in their game modes and in the game itself and even Modern Warfare 3 is like that too. But the realism mode is not for me. It's not for me at all. Like, I sucked ass at it. I think I got like five kills and I died probably like 15 times. I think it's a really great concept though. But for me, it was really hard to adjust to because there's no hit markers. There's no nothing. There's like, you don't even know if you're hitting people or if you're not. And like, that's, that's what realism is. It's supposed to be realistic. Hence why it's called realism mode that's my personal preference and i'm not saying it's a bad mode because i know that there's gonna be people that do enjoy this mode but for me it just wasn't it just didn't i just didn't like it <laughs> i sucked at it so so the big thing that everyone's talking about right now is the mini map should there be a mini map in call of duty modern warfare um so there's no permanent mini map and everyone knows this it's been talked about on twitter and everyone's bitching about it or people are saying oh i really like it it's it's like it's either you like it or you hate it and there's a lot of people that hate it for me personally it doesn't make a huge difference because we do have a personal uav and a uav and an advanced uav also but since i mentioned the advanced uav the advanced uav should be in real time it should like when i'll put it up on the screen the advanced uav has a scanner like a regular UAV, but if you play Black Ops 1 or MW3 or any game that has an advanced UAV, it's always real time. It's not a scanning, you know, UAV. It doesn't scan the area. It's always real time and it always shows you when people are coming around the map at all times. So that need that should change 100%. The solution to no mini map is that we're going to be able to see teammates outlined through walls and I guess in front of us. You guys know the perk team link on Black Ops 4. That's what it's going to work like, but it's not going to be a perk it's just gonna be permanent so that's a good thing because then i'll know if my teammates are pushing the spawns or not however like i said earlier in the 20v20 mode when i said i got lost around the maps no permanent mini map got me lost multiple times even when i was playing on 6v6 maps there were times i was running around in a spawn or i was going to the back of the map instead of like the middle of the map where everything was going on that's my only beef with no mini map i'm fine with no mini map and if they do the team link thing that's fine too but then again there was times where it i, I didn't really even think about looking to the mini map you know on the compass there's a red dot that appears if the enemy team shoots so you'll see where they are and that's what they're doing instead of having the mini map where a red dot would show up you know in the corner of the mini map if someone shot but like i said the team link thing needs to be put in place and if that doesn't work then they should just put in a mini map i don't think they're going to put a mini map in permanently i think that they're going to do this team link thing and that's going to be it but i feel like if there's a big enough outcry when the team link uh feature comes in and people don't like it they'll switch back maybe i don't really know i this is one of those things that i think they're probably gonna just stick out throughout the whole game all right so we've come to the part of the video where i actually start saying really awesome shit about the game dude i want to say that i had tons of fun playing this game it was a lot of fun uh to being able to go out there and you know hang out with people that you know i've talked to over the internet and play this awesome game with them um was a lot of fun so here's uh, here's the things i really like you guys know how much i preach sound design uh, how much i critique sound in video games and especially in call of duty so when i tell you guys that this game has the best sound design in any call of duty game ever created i mean that it's realistic as fuck i'm gonna make a separate video about the sound design because that's how much i love it and that's how much i'm immersed in this game the sound design in this game is incredible and it's the best sound design in any call of duty period i can say that with confidence the attention to detail is incredible and i'm gonna talk about this in another video because i could spend so long talking about this audio control so 
When I say audio control, I mean you can change the volume of certain things in the game. You guys know how Treyarch always has the you know master volume, music volume, and things like that? Yeah, so Infinity Ward is doing that with this game, and I don't think they've ever done that. So there's volume control for the master volume, the music volume, the dialogue volume, aka the character callouts or whatever, the effects, which is like guns and things like that, and the voice chat, which is game chat volume. And that's awesome. I have I said it last year uh, when Black Ops 4 came out because I wanted them to do that for uh, World War II. And I wanted them to do that for Modern Warfare Remastered, and they didn't. And when Black Ops 4 came out, I was like, yes, I love like turning certain things down because you know it's, it's good for reactions. It helps for reactions in-game, and it helps with content. When I saw that, I was like, fuck yeah, dude. I'm so hyped that they're doing this. The animations are awesome in the game. It's th This is the most realistic I've ever seen animations, sound, or anything in the game. For the most part. Uh, even the way people die is super realistic. It's not just, you know, any BS. And they've really emphasized to us when they talked about the sound design and the animations that they wanted to make sure that it ju wasn't just, like, the same old thing that, you know we've seen in other Call of Duties. And the new engine helps with this, so that's awesome. The gun bench. The gun bench is, oh, dude, it's so good. You guys know how I said earlier that the customization in the gun bench is awesome? I love the amount of customization you have for each weapon. You can take an M4 and turn it into an M16, or you could take an AK-47 and turn it into an AK-74U. That's the kind of customization I'm talking about. And when they introduced this at the event, we were like looking at it and uh, there's five attachments that you can put on each gun. So your primary, five attachments. Your secondary, five attachments. Pick 10 is gone and I love it. I love it so much. I sat there creating my class for like 10 to 15 minutes before we started our first game because I was trying to figure out what should I use? What works? What doesn't work? Um, what gun should I use? Should we turn the M4 into an M16? I don't know. Like, it's, it just was, it was just so good. I've never seen this in a Call of Duty game before, but it was so good. The gun bench was awesome. And then they hit us with a bombshell and they were just like, yeah, so the weapons in this game, they could have between 30 and 60 attachments for each weapon. I was like, dude, that's insane. It was the best customization for create a class that I've ever seen in Call of Duty. You guys know I'm big on customization and giving the players freedom. It gave us freedom to create exactly what we wanted in our class. And there's pros and cons to each attachment. And honestly, if you don't know your shit, you can make your gun worse than it originally was. That's something that is a little odd to me. It's like, why would you include that if you can make your gun worse? I don't know why you would want to make your gun worse. You kind of want to make it better. But the freedom to do so is what I'm looking at. And that's, that's fucking awesome. There's plenty of perks. I'm pretty sure there's about six perks in each category. And obviously, you guys know in Call of Duty, there's three categories of perks. And like I've said with other things in this game, I love the amount of perks because there's options to choose from. It's not like we only have four perks and it's like, oh, this is the only really good one I'm going to use. There's freedom to choose what you want and make your class the way that you want to make your class. You're not restricted. It's, it's really free, and it's just, oh, dude, it's so great. Like I said before, I sat there for 10 to 15 minutes trying to create my classes and trying to make the class that I wanted to run, you know, and so that was really awesome. There was only 15 or 16 weapons in the build that we played, and honestly, if you think about it, there's more weapons technically because if you take the M4 and you turn it into an M16, that's another weapon technically. Um... So you can do that. So there's more than just 15 or 16 uh, weapons in the game technically, but if we're going just by the base guns, there was like 15 or 16. I wish I had used the shotguns a little bit more, but I loved using the shotguns in the gunfight 2v2 mode. That was fucking awesome. And then the last thing that I'm gonna talk about is the kill streaks. I know I've already mentioned the point system. There's kill streaks in this game and there's plenty of them and they're easy to get at least the smaller ones so there's a personal uav that's pretty self-explanatory that's three kills there's a regular uav which is for your whole team which is four kills there's counter uav which is four kills as well you can't run a uav and a counter uav at the same time because they both require four kills so 
I really like how they did this though, because in the past couple Call of Duties, we've had to get five kills for a fucking UAV, dude. Like what? A UAV should be the easiest thing to get in the game. Three kills, four kills, whatever. And they brought that back. You know, I'm pretty sure there's hardline in this game too. So you guys know what hardline does. It requires one less kill for a streak. So technically a personal UAV could be two kills and a regular UAV could be three kills. I love that there is a ton of customization in this game. I love the amount of streaks that we saw in this build. There is 17 streaks in the build that we played. 17. That's fucking nuts. There's 15 in Black Ops 4 right now. And there's about, I think there's about 17 or so in World War II, I think. But there's still streaks that we haven't even seen, I'm pretty sure. Because if you guys watch the trailer, there's a nuke in this game. And there is a perk in this game that allows you to stack streaks. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to stack your streaks in order to get a nuke like Modern Warfare 2, or if the nuke is always gonna be gun kills like Modern Warfare 3 and games that have come after it. I love that there's kill streaks in this game. I've been saying for years, bring back kill streaks. And when World War II brought in Blitzkrieg, which allowed us to use kill streaks instead of score streaks, I was all in. I was like, dude, Call of Duty needs kill streaks. It can't be score streaks. Or give us the option to do both because that's awesome. There's a perk called Kill Chain, which allows you to stack your streaks. You know, if you get a Predator missile at five kills and then you kill two enemies with your Predator missile, you get a Harrier because you got, you know, two more kills and five plus two equals seven. So basic maths. <laughs> but yeah, man, that, that's, what, uh, that's what I really liked about this game. I'm gonna go into the sound design in another video because I really love the sound design in this game. It's so good. Oh my god, I was nerding out when that when they were explaining it to us, but I hope you guys did enjoy this video If you guys did make sure you guys leave a like down below subscribe turn on notifications We are on the road to a hundred thousand subscribers So it's greatly appreciated make sure you guys use code foxy on gfield.com for 10% off your order It's greatly appreciated another way to help me out. Um, we have a public discord server down in the description below as well and Thank you so much to respawn for the brand new chair and make sure you guys use code foxy for 5% off You know, you just might as well just plug everything make sure you guys follow all my social medias down in the description below my Twitter my Instagram my twitch um, Like I said discord all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the modern warfare footage I'm very curious to hear what you guys think we posted a video yesterday as well. Uh, it's just raw footage I wanted to immerse you guys in the footage and in the game before I even gave my thoughts and feelings about it because I wanted you guys to form your own opinions before I spoke about it. Uh, and I wanted you guys to kind of process the sound design and things like that and just the look of the game. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.